Are you looking for a flash that will work on just about any camera? You're in luck. The new Godox Lux Junior works with Fujifilm, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Olympus and Panasonic digital cameras. It even works with film cameras. So if you have a Leica M6, a Contax G2 or a Nikon FM3A, the Lux Junior will work with those cameras too. This makes the Godox Lux Junior a very versatile bit of kit. In this review, I'll give you a quick overview of the flash, how to use it, and I'll show you some sample photos I took on my Fujifilm X-T4 and my Contax G1. Now at this stage, you might think this is a dream come true, a flash that will work on pretty much any camera. However, there is a downside. The Godox Lux Junior does not read any settings from your camera. That's right, it is not a TTL flash. A lot of modern flashes are built for only one camera brand. So for example, with Godox's other flashes, they typically have a letter after their name. So the V863 will have an F after it if it's for a Fujifilm camera, or an S for Sony, an N for Nikon, or a C for Canon. So with those flashes, you can't switch them between a Fujifilm digital camera and a Sony. You've got to stick to what's ever on the box. And that's because the set of pins on those flashes are only for that system. So that's why you can't swap them back and forth. What makes the Godox Lux Junior a little bit old school, a little bit retro, is that it only has a single pin. Now the upside of that is you can use it on any digital camera, any film camera, fantastic. The downside is though, it does not read any settings from the camera. So you have to use it in manual mode or Godox's automatic mode. Like other Godox products, the Lux Junior is attractively branded and presented. Inside the box you'll find the Lux Junior flash, a little storage bag, a sync cord trigger cable, and a manual in Mandarin and English. The manual doesn't go into a huge amount of detail, and the only gripe really I've got with the manual, it could be a little bit more explanatory in some ways, and also the, the size of the text in the manual is really small. I wear glasses, and I couldn't actually read it. Even with my glasses on, I couldn't read the manual. Luckily though, Godox provide the manual in PDF format on their website. My first impressions of the flash were very positive. It is tiny. It only weighs like 130 grams, which is just over five ounces. Uh, even with the batteries in, it is not that heavy. It can fit in your pocket. It's got a nice sort of touch here, some sort of texture on the top here. I mean, it's all plastic, but it's got this sort of retro sort of texture on top there. On the bottom here, you've got the single pin which fires the flash from your camera. You've also got the little battery compartment there. I did find it a little bit hard to open up. I felt like I was gonna break it when I opened the battery compartment, but I didn't, it's fine. It's very tough, sturdy plastic, but I just felt like it was yeah, a little bit hard to get off. But once I got those two AAA batteries in, it was fine. You've got the switch on the back here, which goes from off to manual to auto. On the top there, you've got the little uh, test light button, which there you go, tests the flash for you. On the back of the camera, there are these two dials. So there's an inner dial that spins freely, doesn't actually do anything as far as I'm aware. It has no effect on flash output whatsoever. It's just like a little reference guide or cheat sheet of suggested values for different combinations of ISO, aperture, distance, and flash power. And there's also this clickable dial here. Okay, so when you're in manual mode, the clickable dial here is the one you want. This goes down in different values from full power, 1-1, one, one, right down to 1 64th power of the flash. So when you're in manual mode, you just choose whatever power setting you want there and away you go. Now, if you're using a digital camera, it's great. You might start off at half power. Now, if that's a bit too overpowering for your scene, you can just dial it down to 1 8th or, or 1 16th or whatever you want. So that's a really quick, powerful way to get instant feedback work out how much flash you need and, and use it that way. To use automatic mode, you just have to switch it to A on the back of the flash and then it will decide how much light is needed. There is some suggested ISO, aperture and distance information here in the manual, but you can just wing it like I did if you like. There's a tiny little light sensor on the flash that is used in automatic mode. And the light sensor will sort of, you know, take ambient light reading and it will give you some flash based on the, the ambient light situation. I don't think it's terribly sophisticated. It's just giving you sort of reading different values of ambient light and changing the flash up and down a little bit. So for example, you know, I have noticed that if I just I'll put it on automatic now and I press that, there you go. It sort of outputs one flash. And then if I cover up the light sensor, you can sort of, 
gosh, I just blinded myself. You can actually see and also hear that the flash output increased, okay? So I don't think it's terribly sophisticated, the automatic mode, but it definitely does change um, according to the values of the ambient light. The Lux Junior has a couple of extra little tricks up its sleeve. Like I mentioned before, there's a PC sync cable, so you can just put you know, one end in here and one end in your film camera, and you can use that to trigger the flash, but you can also mount the flash on top of all film cameras, and it works just fine as well. On the other side of the flash, there's these little buttons. You know, off is in the middle, and there's S1 and S2, and that's if you wanna use other flashes to trigger the Lux Junior. I didn't use that, but it could be an interesting feature that you could use with this flash as well. So now I'll talk you through some of the images I took with my Godox Lux Junior. The first set are the ones I took on my Fujifilm X-T4. So this first one here is of my son. I took this in a restaurant. I had the flash on automatic mode on the X-T4. And this looks great. It's really illuminated his face. It looks great. It looks a little bit bright. And that's the thing. Like, I don't think you're using this for sort of subtle flash. I think you're using this for, you know, nice, bright, direct flash. The next one here is at nighttime. This is of my wife, and I think she looks great here as well. Again, the flash has really illuminated her very nicely. This is in automatic mode, but I think it's done a great job. You know, you've got the background fairy lights there, but, and she was kind of in darkness, but the flash has beautifully illuminated her. So again, I think this is a great shot. So we're here at Eat Street in Brisbane, which is a nighttime uh, eating and sort of music venue. And this was kind of like semi-dark. There were definitely ambient lights, as you can see from the fairy lights and the neon signs and the restaurants and stuff like that. But when I uh, flashed the scene with the Godox Lux Junior on top of the X-T4, I think I did this on full power. It really just gave a, quite a big amount of light to this quite large area. And that's the thing about the Lux Junior is it's very small and compact and light but it is actually a very, very powerful flash. You can really get a good amount of light out of it. I took a few photos of restaurants here at Eat Street. I had to be careful because they had plastic sort of screens and the flash, you get a reflection of the flash off that sometimes. So I took this one side on, I think it looks great. You know, you've got the nice neon lights there and you've got the guy there sort of making the food. I think that looks really cool. The next one here is of, not of a restaurant, but it's of a boat. There's like a boat there in the middle of Eat Street. And again, there was some ambient lighting there, but the Lux Junior, I think this was on like one quarter flash output. This just really lit up the whole scene beautifully, which was amazing. And you've still got those lovely sort of nighttime colors of dusk there in the background. Another restaurant shot here. I think I lowered this down to about 1 16th of a flash here because there was quite a lot of light. But again, this one looks great. The colors and the output of the flash look fantastic. This is another restaurant shot, and you can actually see the reflection. There's a plastic screen there over the restaurant workers. You can actually see the reflection of the flash, but I still really like this shot. I think it's really nice. I think the colors look great. And you know, certain aspects of that scene were quite dark, but the, the Lux Junior has done a great job at lighting it up. The next one is of my daughter. There's some nice neon signs there you can take photos in front of. I took a few photos here in a row and I sort of powered up and powered down the flash to different settings. And that's very quick. You know, I took one photo, checked the back of the screen. Okay, I need a little bit more flash. And so it's very easy and quick to work with. And in two or three images, I got this one here. I really like this. I think she looks great. And again, you've still got those nice neon lights in the background sort of coming through in the scene. So yeah, it's done a great job here as well. And quite possibly my favorite two photos I took at Eat Street. The next one again is my daughter. So there's the beautiful ambient lighting in the background there uh, with those lovely colorful lights. And then I sort of freeze framed her. The flash is quite powerful here, but I still think it looks great. I don't think it's too strong. I think for this particular image, it's spot on. It looks fantastic. So I think this was on half power. And then this next one, the flash is a bit more subtle here. Again, my wife was pretty much all in darkness here and the flash has just lit her up beautifully while still exposing, you know, all around the nice love heart and the nice ambient lights. I think it looks great. Next up are the images from my Contax G1. So this is the good thing. I was at Eat Street with both of these cameras and I could just move the flash from one camera to the other. You know, it was really good to be able to do that with one flash. So this is probably one of the favorite ones I took on film. And again, it's my wife. You know, we've got the lovely background colored lights there. And you've got the Godox Lux Junior in auto mode. And look at that, it, it's boom. You've got this beautiful light. She was in darkness, but she looks great. And you've still got all the detail behind her of all those beautiful neon lights. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. 
The next couple of shots were taken in a restaurant when I was just playing around with settings while I was taking photos with the Contax G1 on Kodak Gold 200 film with the Lux Junior on top of the camera. So on a more powerful flash setting here, you know, my wife's face is illuminated, but the background is quite dark. And then I dialed it down a little bit and you can actually see more of that ambient light in the background coming through. So again, the, the flash is probably a little bit harsh here. I think it was quite close to her, but you can sort of see the power of what this can do. And even with film cameras, working with film, you know, you can get some really good results with this flash. The next one is of my son and we're here in King George Square in Brisbane. There was some very, very strong backlighting. I put this on auto just to see what the Godox Lux Junior would do. I'm not sure what the flash output is there. I don't think it's even close to being, you know, full flash output, but his face is illuminated. It's a little bit underexposed perhaps, but I still think it's a nice image. And even on auto mode here, you know, with that strong backlighting, I think it's done a great job. The next scene is in the car park. I dialed the flash to one eighth power. I had the contacts G2, uh, G1 rather, on F2, and it was quite dark, and boom, press the shutter button, and here you go, my, my wife's face is quite nicely illuminated, a little bit bright, but you've still got all that background sort of detail there of the car park, you know, all the neon lights and the concrete and stuff, so again, I think this has worked really well. And the last two images, I have my faithful pooch. The family was sick of me taking photos, so I called in the dog. So this first photo here of the pooch is on half power flash. It's relatively close and it's very, very strong light as you can see. He's kind of like a bit of a stun mullet there. He's kind of freeze frame. And you can see the background, the wall there. The wall isn't white, but the wall looks white just because of the power of this flash. And then for the final image here, I actually got out my Sekonic light meter. Well, it's actually a flash meter and I tripped the test button on the Lux Junior to see what settings I should use. I dialed them into my Contax G1, and there you go. There's probably much better exposure here because the wall is kind of a creamy color, and the dog still looks great. He's properly exposed, he looks really good, but the, the wall is probably a better sort of, more natural sort of looking color there. So again, using a flash meter with this, it all works great. So there you go, there is my quick little review of the Godox Lux Junior Flash. It's a flash which I really enjoyed using. I love the fact that I can use it on my Fujifilm X-T4 and also my film cameras like my Contax G1. I think in manual mode on the digital camera, that was my preferred mode. I could just sort of take a test shot and then dial up the flash output up or down depending on the test shot. And that worked really well. It was really quick and easy to use. And even when I use the auto mode, you know, the auto mode is probably not quite as, or well, anywhere near as sophisticated as say TTL. The auto mode gave pretty good results. I mean, occasionally the results weren't quite right, but generally it gave pretty good results. It's light and compact. It's extremely powerful, it's versatile, and it's priced very competitively. At only 69 US dollars, I think it's a bit of kit that a lot of photographers should have in their bag if they really want to transform their photography.